Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers trespassing, warrantless entry, and exigent circumstances, and is brought to us by the African American Communities Channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into today's interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Incogni, a new product brought together by our friends at Surfshark. A few days ago, I used Google to find the nearest donut shop so I could get some breakfast, and since then, my social media feeds have been full of nothing but ads for donuts and other sweet treats, and well, this is horrible for my diet. If you've ever Googled something only to have all of your social media feeds filled with nonsense ads based on your search, well then the digital security experts at Surfshark have developed a solution for you. Whenever you use a digital service like Facebook or Amazon, there's a high probability that your personal information is collected and sold to data brokers. Thanks to the California Consumer Privacy Act, you have the right to request that your data be deleted and prevented from being sold. However, as with any other legal matter, it can take weeks or even months to actually see any results. Incogni is a web service that makes reclaiming your personal data simple and automated. Incogni does all the hard work for you and submits deletion requests on your behalf to over 66 data brokers worldwide. All you have to do is sign up, enter your info, and Incogni will take care of the rest. Right now, Incogni is offering the first 100 members of the ATA community who click the link below and use code AUDIT a 60% discount on their Incogni service. So, click the link in the description and claim your exclusive offer before it's too late. Thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring this episode. On June 13th, 2020, two officers with the Arlington Police Department responded to a call from an individual who claimed to hear a male and female arguing and glass breaking. As part of their investigation, the officers visited the Arlington, Texas apartment of local father, Christopher Finley. And although it is unclear what occurred immediately after the officers approached Mr. Finley's door, once one of the officers put his foot in the door, Mr. Finley began to film the encounter and stream it on Facebook Live. I don't want to talk anymore, sir. I, I'm, a, I'm asking you again sir. to please remove. I'm an unarmed citizen in my home. Sir, I'm asking you, sir, to please remove your foot because that's to me that's threatening, sir. So again, not you. sir, I'm asking you, please, this is you're, you're now in my home. Sir, you sir, are a listen, public listen. servant, okay. I, sir. I understand that, sir. It is me and my son, okay, just and I'm asking you, okay. you listen, to sir? please remove your okay. foot. Can you listen? You're not coming in my home. Okay, just listen, listen, sir. That's, there's nothing else to listen to. You're not coming in my home. Sir. I'm asking you to please leave. I'm not going to close okay. my door and continue with my day. Okay. You guys have a good day, officer. Okay. Have a good, well, sir, do not, sir. Sir. Sir, this is my home. <laughs> sir, this is my home. I am Was no longer speaking with you. You are not needed in this home. Was there a disturbance? I am no longer speaking with you. Sir, we we're not asking you. We're not Have a good sight, sir. Sir, again. We're not telling again, you. officer, again. Please remove your foot out of my home. Okay. Was there a disturbance here? I am no longer communicating with you, sir. We're just trying to make sure. I'm telling you that I do not need you guys. We're not saying it is me and my son, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, now I'm not in trouble. But I'm telling you that it is me and my son, and I would like for you to okay. remove where, your foot. Where is your wife? I, I don't have to answer any questions to you, sir. So okay, now I'm wait. asking you again. Let me, remove let me, your foot out of my home. I don't want to speak anymore, sir. Okay, let me have a good day. I don't need you. I don't, I'm not asking you. I am in my home. Okay, I'm not asking you. My, son, my son is fine. I am fine. We are the only people that are occupying this residence. You are trespassing as of right now because I have asked you several times to remove your foot out of my home. So at this time, public servant, you are trespassing. So one more time, sir, I'm going to ask you to remove your foot out of my home and have a good day, officer. Mr. Finley accuses the officer who has put his foot in the door of trespassing. According to Section 30.05 of the Texas Penal Code, a person commits the offense of criminal trespass, quote, if the person enters or remains on or in property of another without effective consent, and the person had noticed that the entry was forbidden or received notice to depart but failed to do so. However, the statute specifically explains that, quote, for purposes of this section, entry means the intrusion of the entire body, making the fact that only a part of an individual's body entered the property insufficient to sustain a conviction. However, even if a partial entry was adequate to prove criminal trespass, the statute specifically states that it is a defense to prosecution if the individual was, now quoting, employed by an entity that had, or that the person reasonably believed had, effective consent or authorization provided 
provided by law to enter the property and performing a duty within the scope of that employment. Likewise, Section 9.21 of the Texas Penal Code provides that, quote, conduct is justified if the actor reasonably believes the conduct is required or authorized by law. And in the 1994 case of Rosales v. State, the Fifth Court of Appeals of Texas held that Section 9.21 was a defense available to law enforcement officers for any criminal trespass that might result from the performance of their official duties under exigent circumstances. Accordingly, because the statute defines entry as an intrusion of the entire body, and the officer only put his foot in the door, it is highly unlikely that a court would find that the officer committed criminal trespass. However, even if the officer had entered the apartment with his entire body, the officer would have a defense against a criminal trespassing charge if he had a reasonable belief his conduct was authorized by law. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. No, no, no. Hold on. Sir, sir. Sir. Sir, get away from my door. We gotta make sure it's okay. Sir, I'm feeling attacked at this moment. I'm, I'm not asking attacking you, man. You're, you're in my residence. I am not giving you permission to enter my residence. So if you want to enter my residence, go back to your station, okay. speak to your captain and All judge. Right. Say, no. sir, sir, this move is on aside. live. Move aside. Sir, okay, get out. Move aside. No, don't, no, no, don't touch my phone. Okay, move aside. CJ, close that door, son. Move aside. I'm telling you not to enter my residence without a warrant, sir. All Without a warrant, a sir, you're not entering my residence. This is my home. But I am unarmed, Listen. I am peaceful, and in my residence. Listen. I'm asking this man to remove his foot Listen. from my home. Okay. This is my domicile. I have the right to I have the right to refuse. That's it. Sir, again. Okay and I'm telling you that everyone in here is fine. Again, sir. You're being irrational right now. No, I'm not, sir. This is my home. You are trying to invade my home. We have to do it well. You're trying to invade my home. Sure you're looking at the residence. I'm well. We got a call. Sir, you will not, you're not going to enter my home. You do not have a warrant, you will not enter my home. Please remove your foot from my door so that I can go back and chill with my son. Sir, sir, we just gotta sir, make sure your wife is okay. Sir, okay? there's no one in this home, sir, there's no one in this home besides me and my child. Point blank period. Okay. If you wanna come in my home, then I, with all rights, once you come back with a, a signed warrant, from a Tarrant County judge, you will be more than welcome. We're, like I Please, said, we're not going to do a search or anything. Sir, we got to do, do a sir, warrant. Sir, let me tell you something. I am a very legal citizen. I'm not worried about any no, of that. But not. again, you don't that. have permission to enter my home. Like I said, we're doing... We're you will not enter my home. You're looking at, you are looking at the okay. resident of this home. I am looking you in your eye and telling you I'm well. This is where this ends, sir. You're not entering my home. And again, at this point, you really violate my rights with your foot in my property. As Mr. Finley repeatedly informs the officers that they do not have his consent or the authority to enter his home, one of the officers keeps his foot in the doorway, preventing Mr. Finley from closing his door. It is a basic principle of Fourth Amendment law that searches and seizures inside a home without a warrant are presumptively unreasonable. And in the 1980 case of Peyton v. New York, the Supreme Court made clear that the warrant requirement of the Fourth Amendment, quote, has drawn a line at the entrance to the house. Additionally, in the 2001 case of Kylo v. United States, the Supreme Court stated that, quote, any physical invasion of the structure of the home by even a fraction of an inch was too much, and that, now quoting again, there is certainly no exception to the warrant requirement for the officer who barely cracks open the front door and sees nothing but the non-intimate rug on the vestibule floor. Applying this reasoning, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals determined in the 2012 case of Dalcor v. City of Lakewood that, quote, physical entry of a home, even if only with one foot on the threshold, is an entry of the home for constitutional purposes. Likewise, the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of Georgia held in the 2008 case of Haney v. City of Woodstock that the placement of an officer's foot beyond the threshold of the doorway constituted a warrantless entry when a lieutenant stepped forward and stuck her foot in the doorway of an individual's home to prevent it from closing. Accordingly, although Texas law requires an individual to enter a property with their entire body to violate the trespassing statute, it is possible that a court would still determine that the officer entered Mr. Finley's apartment for Fourth Amendment purposes by putting his foot in the doorway. However, it should be noted that in the 2020 case of Gorski v. Harris County, the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of Texas held that case law, quote, had not clearly established whether placing a foot in the doorframe to prolong a consensual encounter constitutes an illegal entry under the Fourth Amendment. So, it seems likely that a court would conclude that the officer was entitled to qualified immunity for putting his foot in the door if Mr. Finley were to pursue a civil rights lawsuit against him. You're not I, I don't have to. You are a public servant. I don't have to listen to you. You knocked on my door. I'm not asking you for it. I didn't, I didn't call y'all to tell me to come give y'all. I didn't tell y'all to come give me an explanation. Sir, we got a call to this location. Sir, you didn't get a call to this location. Yes, you did not get a call know, to this location. Address Sir, okay, look, I, I'm not going to do this with you. Again, I'm asking you 
to remove your foot off of my property now. So you're going to continue to violate my rights, officer? Sir, I'm not violating you. You are. Rights. This is my property. You do not have a signed warrant, and your foot is in my property. You just saw my son, and you saw me. That's the only people in this residence. If you want to come to my home, feel free to come back with a, a, a signed warrant from the Tarrant County judge. Okay, sir, yeah, I'm being very rational. So we're telling him what we need to do a welfare check and make sure his wife's okay, okay? We got a call for There is no wife in this home. To make sure. Sir, I, and again, listen, I, said, listen, I, I said, no, sir, I said what they sign listen. warrant, you will be able to enter my that home. There's me and my child in this, there's only me and my child in this home. Hey, no, listen to sir, me. no, sir, because you, you are, okay, well, okay. tell your deputy, first no. of all, tell your deputy no, to remove his, have, so you're going to right. so you're gonna continue to trespass on my property. Yes, sir. We're gonna make on my sure property. Okay. CJ, come to the door again, baby boy. This is as far as you're going to come in my home. CJ, is there anybody in there? Is there anybody in there, sir? Are you harmed, sir? You're fine? Okay, don't be scared, sir. Be okay? Scared. So go back in the room and close the door, okay, baby? I love you. It's okay. That's as far as okay. it's going to go. You're not entering my residence, sir. Sir. Without a signed warrant from a Tarrant County judge, I am not permitting you to enter my dwelling. That's fine. We don't need a warrant. No, sir. Yes, you do, sir. We have agency circumstances to welcome There is no... Sure okay. okay? You looked at the two... Is, you, looked at, you looked at the two accompanied residents in this home. There's no one else in this home. There has been no one else in this home. So, again, sir... It, this is making me feel very threatened because you are trespassing. We're not trespassing. You are trespassing, sure. sir. Okay. The supervisor claims that the officers do not need a warrant to enter the home because they have so-called exigent circumstances based on the call they received alleging a domestic disturbance between Mr. Finley and his supposed wife, despite the fact that Mr. Finley claims that he does not have a wife and no one else besides his son is in the apartment. As the Supreme Court explained in the 1978 case of Mincy v. Arizona, quote, warrants are just generally required to search a person's home, unless the exigencies of the situation make the needs of law enforcement so compelling that the warrantless search is objectively reasonable under the Fourth Amendment. Applying this exception to the warrant requirement, which is commonly known as the exigent circumstances doctrine, the Supreme Court held in the 2006 case of Brigham City v. Stewart that, quote, police may enter a home without a warrant when they have an objectively reasonable basis for believing that an occupant is seriously injured or imminently threatened with such injury. In the same vein, the Supreme Court noted in the 2006 case of Georgia v. Randolph that, quote, no question has been raised, or reasonably could be, about the authority of the police to enter a dwelling to protect a resident from domestic violence. So long as they have good reason to believe such a threat exists, it would be silly to suggest that the police would commit a tort by entering to determine whether violence has just occurred, however much a spouse objected. However, in this situation, Mr. Finley would have a strong argument argument that exigent circumstances did not exist, and that the officers, therefore, did not have the legal authority to enter his apartment without a warrant. In the 2015 case of Osborne v. Harris County, which was decided by the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of Texas, deputies responded to the wrong unit to investigate a call that a male and female were yelling and throwing things in a nearby apartment. The officers entered and searched the apartment over the occupant's objections, despite the fact that he repeatedly told the deputies that they had the wrong apartment and that no one else was inside. Side. The deputies argued that they had the legal authority to enter the apartment because they believed that someone in the apartment might need help based on the report of a domestic disturbance. However, the court noted that there was no indication of a problem in the apartment as, now quoting, the deputies did not hear any noise, witness any violence, or observe any signs that violence had recently occurred or was about to take place, and ultimately concluded that a jury could determine that the deputies violated the Fourth Amendment when they entered and searched the apartment without the occupant's consent. In reaching this conclusion, the court cited several cases from other federal circuits, including the 2012 case of Story v. Taylor, where the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals stated that, quote, a report of a loud argument that has ceased by the time an officer arrives, although relevant to the exigent circumstances inquiry, does not alone create exigent circumstances to justify a warrantless arrest. And the 2013 case of United States v. Timmon, where the Eleventh Circuit Court of Appeals observed that the cases applying the exigent circumstances exception, quote, have in common the indicia of an urgent ongoing emergency, in which officers have received emergency reports of an ongoing disturbance, arrive to find a chaotic scene, 
and observed violent behavior, or at least evidence of violent behavior. Now, although we do not know all of the information the officers received from dispatch, given the similarities to the Osborne case, it is certainly possible that a court would conclude that the officers did not have the exigent circumstances necessary to enter Mr. Finley's apartment, as there did not appear to be any signs of struggle in Mr. Finley's apartment beyond the allegedly broken glass. Sir, Listen, what, sir. what this door stops, what this door stops sir, is my property. I'm not willing to walk away with that. Sir, knowing, knowing I've already, sir, okay, okay? sir you can have an officer monitor on my door and go get a warrant. We but without a warrant, sir, okay. you are not entering my residence, sir. Okay. No, sir, nobody's no, entering my home, sir. Okay, I'm giving you one chance sir, that I can work with you. Or I know my rights. Just gonna go in there and, and if you okay? do that, sir, I okay. swear to you, sir, I have 351 people on live who have witnessed I that I have not given you but permission to enter my home. No, sir, I'm cleaning up my home. I don't trust you officers. Oh, you I do not trust you, and I have the right. These are my okay. property. You're, you're, this is my property. Me, not I'm, I'm not yelling. I'm, I'm, I'm trying sorry. To give you, I'm trying to give sir, you I'm not wave. yelling. Because, sir, not, until, not until not until you not until talk. you and your officer stop trespassing on my property. Okay. I will hold my door sir, open. Right now, you haven't given me any sir, you're gonna hold your door open. Sir, I, okay, you're again, I am verbally verbally affirming to you that when you remove your when you remove your foot off of my property, I will hold my door ajar to speak with you. Stop trespassing on my property that I will stand here with my door ajar and sir, communicate listen. with you. But until then, sir, I feel very okay. threatened I'm and I'm not willing. Sir, just let me talk for 10 sir, seconds. Sir, okay. okay. That, 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 more sir, that is how we can okay. speak, sir. Sir. And this came out as a possible sir. domestic disturbance. That domestic dis between me and my okay. son. CJ, sir. close the door, baby. It's okay. Please close yeah. the door, son. Okay. This is crazy, okay. man. Okay. Like, this is crazy. My son is crying, bro. You. You're not hey, coming hey, in my hey, home, hey, man. Actually, right now, I see broken glass. So that's yeah, you see broken glass. My son dropped his snack bowl. My son dropped his snack bowl. Because my son dropped his snack bowl? That, oh, wow. Buddy, sir. we get a call for a domestic disturbance, sir. we have to check. So this is what we're doing. Sir, let me tell you. I, I have a, it's me. Can we see your son? And my, see his face. Make sure he just okay. did. Oh, my God. Y'all, this is what y'all want to expose my son to. CJ, no, sir. Because I'm going to, no, sir. I'm going to honor his request. Come here, son. Come here. Come here, son. Come here, son. Come here, son. Come here, son. Okay. Good. CJ. Son, sorry, is there, so, sir, you don't have permission to speak to my son. Okay. So, so, CJ. Y'all gonna do this in front of my child? Y'all gonna do this in front of my child? CJ, y'all gonna do this in front of my child? Y'all are gonna do this in front of my child, bro? Stop hurting your child. CJ, y'all gonna do this in front of my child, bro? Go in the room. CJ, go in the room. Y'all really gonna do this in front of my child, bro? Y'all doing this in front of my child? Bro, say, let me go. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of y'all. Why I'm finna shoot out of all you? Move away from my son. CJ, 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 be quiet. Do not say anything, child. Y'all violate my rights. I'm on y'all mother. Get out of my home, and I got all you badges. Get out of my home, boy. 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 Is he cut? I, I'm a proud. I'm a good black father, son. I don't put my hands on my son. Is it blood on my son? That ain't blood. I got a dog, dummy. A That's no blood. And there's blood. That's a snack bowl. You see the snacks, dummy? That's a snack bowl. I have a dog, dumb dumb. All y'all is a you just violated my rights. Get the out of my house. Get the out of my house. After the officers briefly searched the premises and found that nobody else was home, they left Mr. Finley's apartment. Mr. Finley also alleged in a separate Facebook post that officers followed him in his truck as he left his home later that same day. The Arlington Police Department informed a citizen on Facebook that they were going to explore the situation further, but no investigation details have been publicly shared. As of the date of writing of this episode, it is not known whether Mr. Finley filed a complaint or intends to pursue legal action. Overall, the Arlington officers get a B minus, because although it is possible that a court would conclude that their warrantless entry into Mr. Finley's apartment was constitutional under the exigent circumstances doctrine, it is more likely that they entered Mr. Finley's apartment in violation of the Fourth Amendment. However, it seemed clear throughout the encounter that the officers were only interested in making sure that no one was injured or in danger inside the apartment, and when they did enter, they did a quick sweep to check for people, and did not abuse the opportunity by searching for contraband. Once the officers confirmed that nobody else was in the apartment besides Mr. Finley and his son, they immediately left the apartment and did not attempt to pursue any sort of criminal charges against Mr. Finley. These actions are consistent with officers who genuinely believe that they had the exigent circumstances necessary to enter the apartment, not officers who were seeking to abuse their authority. And while they may have potentially got the analysis wrong in this instance, it's also possible that a court would agree that, based on the totality of the circumstances, they had 
had reason to believe that someone was in danger. This encounter demonstrates the difficulties that officers face when determining whether exceptions such as the exigent circumstances doctrine apply to real-life situations due to the highly fact-specific contours of case law and the sometimes imprecise legal standards. Mr. Finley gets an A, because although it is possible that the officers may have had the authority to enter his home, he demonstrated a basic understanding of the warrant requirement of the Fourth Amendment, firmly but respectfully attempted to defend his rights and worked to dispel the officer's concerns without granting them consent to enter his home. That being said, Mr. Finley was not necessarily privy to everything that the officers knew, and because courts determine whether exigent circumstances exist based on the information available to officers, it is important to keep in mind that a court could potentially conclude they had the authority to enter his home, even though it seemed clear to him that he had done nothing wrong. For this reason, this interaction not only shows how challenging applying vague legal doctrines can be for officers, but also exemplifies the difficulties citizens can experience in interpreting these principles when attempting to understand and enforce their rights. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.